Onions are the workhorse vegetables in the kitchen. There's hardly a dish that's prepared without them, and this is true for cuisines worldwide. They're easy to prepare, inexpensive, and they're delicious. Onions are part of the allium family. There are many other members. For example, we have shallots, garlic are in this family, leeks, and also chives are members of this family. And onions range in a variety of colors, sizes, shapes. Their flavors can be very pungent, very um, strong, um, but they can also be very mild and very sweet. Now, when we look at onions, they're really divided into two types. We have our spring and summer onions, which tend to have a thinner skin. They're grown um, in warmer temperatures, and they're available late in the spring until late into the summer. And these include the Walla Walla um, onions that you can get from Washington. They include the Maui's from Hawaii. And they also include the Vidalia's from Georgia. Now, when you buy the sweet onions, they tend to have a little bit thinner skin. And they are, like they, we say, very, very sweet onions. Now, you also have your storage onions, which tend to be grown in um, colder regions. They have a dark skin on them which um, the way that this is, is produced is they dry these for up to a couple of months so that these will last longer in a storage facility. They tend to be a lot stronger in flavor as well. Now there's also smaller versions. You can buy the pearl onions, which come in white. You can also get red pearl onions. And then we also have the scallions, which um, many people call green onions. So there's a lot of varieties, sizes, and flavors of the onions. Now let's talk a little bit about the, the different varieties, the colors, the storage onions. The yellow onion here is really called the all-purpose onion, and this is what is used in many, many of the recipes in the kitchen. It has a quite strong flavor when it's raw, but when it's cooked, it actually becomes very, very sweet which is nice. Sometimes you actually think that you've added sugar to the cooking pot because it adds a lovely sweet flavor. Now white onions are indeed white and they tend to be less sweet than the yellow onions and tend to fall apart a little bit easier during the cooking process. And then we have the beautiful red onions. I mean that color is just gorgeous. Um, they tend to be more mild than the yellow onions. They are nice because they hold their shape and their color very well. So they work well to add a little pickling to, a little sweetness to, put in salads, or to put them on the grill because they hold their shape and their color. And then shallots. Shallots are, are a cousin to the onions, but we, we tend to include them in this category because they have the same onion flavor but are much more mild than any of the other varieties of onions. They actually have um, a, a double globe. Whoops. They actually have a double globe and come apart always and work as if there are two onions. And then we have the scallions, as I mentioned, the green onions. And uh, they have a mild flavor as well. Now you can buy these uh, that look like giant green onions and they're called leeks. And sometimes they're available in the store and, well often they're available in the store, but they add a nice lovely flavor as well. Now when you purchase onions, there's a couple things you want to look for. You want to make sure that they um, have a skin. This one, the skin is, is open. I would look for a skin that's completely closed if possible because you know that that's protected a little bit more. You don't want an, on you want an onion that's dry, you want an onion that's clean, and you don't want any that have any green sprouts coming up because that tells you that's a little bit older onion. Now when you purchase, oh and you don't want any dark spots or any mildew or mold spots because of course that means it's aging. Now when you're buying the green onions or the leeks, what you're looking for is the green shaft here to make sure that it's very pliable and fresh. Typically there's one to two inches of white and then the green onion and as long as that is fresh you can use the entire green onion. Now there's one more thing I want to talk about and that's storage. What do you do with these onions once you get them home? Well, if you're buying the storage onions, these work very well in your pantry, for example, in a dry area that has no direct, su no direct light on them and that has well, uh, that's ventilated well. They'll store for up to a month or even a little bit longer. Now the sweet onions, when you buy them, they will store also in your pantry in a dry area, not in the refrigerator. Onions should not be in the refrigerator. But when you store these, they're not going to store as well because they, they don't have the thicker dry skin on them and they're a little uh, higher in moisture. So these will only last to up to about a week, so you need to be careful and use those up quickly when you buy those. Now when you're storing your scallions or green onions and your leeks, you want to put them in a plastic bag and store them in the refrigerator.
a lot of people hesitate to cook with onions because everybody shed a tear over onions. And so that's one thing that people know about onions is they do make you cry. And so I just wanted to talk about a couple of things that can help that. Now, a more drastic thing that people can try is to wear goggles. Now, if you happen to have goggles in your house, that will work. But there actually are a couple of other things that work just as well as that if you don't. You can um, chill them a little bit. That tends to help reduce the gases that are produced from onions when you cut them. Then enzymes are released, which release some gases that then irritate your eyes. And then your eyes' response is to secrete tears, trying to wash out that irritant. And so when you chill them a little bit, then it does help to reduce the gas production. Also, another thing is I, I read suggestions all the time to cut up onions under water. And I think, I don't think I want to try that because that doesn't sound very safe. I think I'd rather cry a little bit than cut myself. So if you just rinse them a little bit in cold water or have them chilled, or if you're really sensitive to crying while you cut onions, then you can just choose some of the milder onions and they don't tend to make, to make people cry quite as much. So I wanted to just show techniques of how to cut up an onion. First of all, just note which is the stem end and which is the root end. You can tell the root end because it's got, well, you can see the little roots on there. And so you would cut off the stem end, first of all, and then cut down through the middle of that root. And then that makes it real easy to remove the skin. And then you've got this little root that helps hold everything together and gives you something to hold on to. And then making sure that your fingers are tucked back, keep them out of the way for safety. Just make a series of close cuts, just almost to that root end, but not quite. And then holding onto that root end, just a few cuts horizontally to the cutting board and just cut down through. And it's a real quick and easy way to dice an onion. Today I'm going to show you how to make a delicious recipe from raw onions. We're going to start with the beautiful red onions. And you take three medium-sized red onions and slice them as thinly as you possibly can. It's very simple. And then you add four cups of boiling water to these onions. We're going to set those aside and let them sit for about five minutes. And while they're sitting in that boiling water, I'm going to show you how to make the marinade, which really finishes these off. You just uh, take a half a cup of cider vinegar, a half a cup of water, three tablespoons of granulated sugar, or you can use honey if you prefer, just a half a teaspoon of salt, and then some fresh ground black pepper. Stir that around until the sugar dissolves, and that's your marinade. So we'll let our onions sit for five minutes and come back and I'll show you how to finish this off. All right, to finish off our pickled red onions, you drain the water off of the onions, put them back in the bowl, and then we're going to add our marinade to that that we made. Again, you wanted those onions to be as thinly sliced as you could. Stir this around a little bit with the marinade on it. And then I like to simply cover that with saran. Put it in the fridge for overnight. And the neat thing that happens, the longer that you let these sit, the better they get. And over time, they're going to shrink down. You can see from this jar, we've, we made these pickled red onions last night, and they get um, much smaller in volume as they sit. And these are delicious. They'll actually last for months in your refrigerator in a sealed container, in a uh, container with a lid on it. All right, what are you going to do with these? Well, they're absolutely delicious. One of my favorite things to do with them is to add some of them to a pasta salad or a potato salad. They really liven up this dish very much. And so you can just um, stir those in, and that makes a really nice addition to your salad.
Another thing that you can do is add these to sandwiches. Here I have a tuna sandwich on a bagel. This just makes the sandwich. I'm ready to eat. I'm going to show you how to make a wonderful tropical salsa, which is one of the best uses for sweet onions. Sweet onions don't hold their shape real well when they're cooked, so they work very well in, as a raw onion in this recipe. We're going to start with one pineapple. If you haven't bought a pineapple and cut it up before, let me show you quickly how to do that. I just cut off the top, cut off the bottom, some little pieces of the skin come off a little bit, and then I just simply cut the rind off, or the skin off. You have to cut kind of deep because there's some eyes, as you can see here, and you want to make sure you remove these because they kind of have little stickers in them. Then you take your peeled pineapple, cut it right down the middle, cut that in quarters, and I don't know if you can see, but inside there's like a circular ring, and th this is the rind, or excuse me, this is the core of the pineapple, and that's very tough. That's a piece that you definitely want to remove. So I just cut it in quarters and then cut that piece right off. Now I take these pieces of pineapple, and you can cut them up in a variety of ways, but for this recipe we want to cut it into pretty small pieces. I just tend to cut it into strips, and then cut it very, in very small pieces. And if they're not quite small enough, you can go back through and take another cut right through that. And you've got some nice diced pineapple for your tropical salsa. The next ingredient in the tropical salsa is a mango. And when you purchase a mango, you want to make sure that it's um, kind of red, that they're kind of soft. Sometimes they're, they vary from red to green, and the real secret is that they're, they're soft. You, there's a, a skinny side when you look down at the mango, and there's a fat side. You want to make sure that you start with the skinny side up because that's the shape of the seed. And all I do is I start by peeling it. You can use a vegetable peeler or you can just peel it with a knife, quick like this. Once you have that peeled, again, make sure you're looking down at the skinny side of the mango. And what I do is I just start making slices down um, next to the seed. And after a while, you get to a point where there's a little bit of resistance. And at that point, you know you've reached the seed and you can't cut all the way through. I do that on both sides. And then when I get to that resistance, I just take a, a, a knife and I'll just peel off the pieces that will come off so that I'm sure to use all of the fruit because it is delicious. As you can see, this is the shape of the mango seed, and so we just cut the fruit off the sides of that. Now all you have to do with this fruit now is cut it up to put into your salsa. You can line up your slices however you want to do that, and just cut those up. The next fruit that's going to be added to our tropical salsa is kiwi. Now there's a couple ways to cut kiwi. I personally like to just quickly peel them, or you can cut them in half and scoop them out with a spoon, scoop the fruit out with a spoon, and then you're going to want to cut that up like you've cut up the other fruit in pretty small pieces. I like this salsa in little tiny pieces for some of the uses I'm going to talk about. And I would recommend using about two kiwi to the one pineapple and the one mango. Now, we're going to finish this off by adding the hero here, or the star, which is one Vidalia onion, which is a sweet onion. 
We're going to also add some jalapeno to that. And this is one diced jalapeno. Now, you can use as much of it as you want. Um, I like to add about a half and then taste it a little bit later for flavor. I add a half a bunch of chopped up cilantro that's been cleaned and chopped. One red onion. And then the juice of a lemon. Now, the neat thing about uh, some of the new gadgets in the kitchen are, uh, one of my favorite things are these lemon juicers. And you just cut the lemon in half, put it in your juicer, and then you simply squeeze that and you have really easy juice. It comes out very easily and very nicely for you. And then I'm going to add salt and pepper to flavor that. Stir that around. It makes a very, very beautiful dish. And I've got some finished over here um, that I'll show you. But what I would like to do is, what I'd recommend doing is taking this salsa now, covering it, and I like it in the refrigerator overnight because I think the flavors just intensify with time. But what are you going to do with that salsa? Well, the easiest thing and one of the fun things to do is just serve that as a uh, salsa with chips. I also like to put that on grilled salmon. That's my most favorite, or a grilled chicken breast as a side dish. It also works really well to add to rice or to put in a wrap with maybe some chicken or cheese and then some of the tropical salsa. So this is a wonderful use of raw sweet onions. The aroma of sauteing onions is one of the best smells there is. All you need to do is just get a, a large, heavy skillet where you can fit a lot of onions in. Add about two tablespoons of olive oil, and then this is probably six or seven real thinly cut onions, and you just put them over a medium heat and just cook them, stirring occasionally until they're done. The term cooking until done can mean a lot of different things with onions. So I just made some samples of onions that are cooked to a different degree. And so if you just cook onions for about maybe five to seven minutes, you'll notice that these are sometimes referred to as just sweating the onions. And all you really do is you've heated these for, like I said, five or seven minutes. They're just starting to soften and they're still translucent. They're just starting to wilt a little bit and they still have a really oniony flavor. Now if you continue to cook them for about maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and I'm giving ranges because it depends on how many onions you're trying to cook at once and the size of the pan and how small they're cooked, they're cut up. Then this, they'd start to, you'll notice that there's just a little bit of color, a little bit of starting to turn an ivory color. And they still have a real strong oniony flavor, but starting to just mellow out just a little bit. Then if you cook them for, probably the range for this color would be more like 25 to 35 minutes and they're just starting to um, turn golden. Then they really start to fall apart a little bit, start to develop some sweetness and um, more flavor, more caramelized flavor. If you continue to cook them until they're real caramelized, and this can take up to 45 minutes to an hour, they're, they're almost a caramel color. They, they turn into the consistency of almost jam-like. Another really easy way to cook onions and get that wonderful aroma of onions throughout your house letting everyone know that there's something good coming is to roast them. So you just need to preheat your oven to about 400 degrees and this is about six onions and I've used a combination of red onions and yellow onions. Just quarter those. Just toss them with a little bit of olive oil, just a couple of tablespoons. and just bake them in that oven for probably 45 minutes to an hour until they're very golden brown, just stirring them occasionally until they're done. After the onions are well browned and done, take them out of the oven and they, sh they should look well caramelized, no blackened parts, but, but well caramelized. They're incredibly sweet when they're at this point. Just pour them into a bowl. Add a little bit of salt and pepper. I already put some on them. And again, believe it or not, these are really one of the, the most popular things we have at Thanksgiving dinner. We just add 
a little bit of balsamic glaze to the top and just mix it in. And the way to make a real simple glaze is to add, it's just balsamic vinegar and butter and sugar. And it's just a two, one, two ratio. So you start out melting two tablespoons of butter. You can also use a combination of butter and olive oil and then add in one tablespoon. So half as much sugar and then just melt that in a saucepan and, until it's just barely melted. Add two tablespoons of balsamic vi vinegar and then just simmer that at a real gentle simmer until it thickens. That takes about two minutes. So then you, you end up with this very syrupy, vinegary glaze that just really brings the roasted onions to life and it, they're, they're just, they're wonderful. So that's a nice side dish for um, Thanksgiving dinner for with meats. You can put those on pizza as a side dish, really with lots of different things on sandwiches. They're wonderful. Another really easy way to bake onions is just slice them in half. And we just bake these in the oven for about 45 minutes just until they barely start to brown. Nice side dish too. So lots of easy things you can do with baking onions. I'm not done fried.